I'm Bruce Means, and I've studied the ecology of Florida, Australia, South America, many parts of the world for many years. I have a PhD in ecology. Um, recently, I published a book I'm very excited about entitled Stalking the Plume Serpent and Other Adventures in Herpetology. I wrote the book to try to get f people to better appreciate animals that most people loathe. That's amphibians and reptiles. Snakes, salamanders, frogs, toads, even a rat. I have uh, been trying to get people to appreciate all the creepy crawly animals of the world as well as birds and mammals, which we all uh, you know, like because they're warm and fuzzy. But it turns out the rest of the creatures on this planet are just as interesting and just as worthy of our, our interest. And, and especially since many of them are now starting to be threatened or endangered, you know, they need our attention. So the book is 23 chapters about animals I've worked with, done really intensive research with, and have come to see through my own experiences how interesting and important they are. So uh, by writing chapters about these uh, creatures, I hope through my experiences, people can vicariate and uh, appreciate the animals like I do. The book starts out with work I've done with the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake here in the southeastern U.S., but actually I expand it to touch on creatures I've in, been involved with all over the world. About five chapters are about animals I've, uh, and snakes especially, that I've uh, uh, worked with in Australia, but then I've done things with uh, earthworms I've discovered, uh, in South America, I've got some chapters, even, even one about Madagascar. And basically, um, while each chapter is sort of a standalone chapter, you can read it and, you know, and put the book down and come back to another chapter later, there is a theme through the book, and the theme is basically, as you read these chapters, I'm hoping you'll get to appreciate, whoa, you know, this snake is as interesting as any bird I ever saw, or the earthworm actually is as <laughs> complicated in many respects as any mammal I ever, ever knew about. So uh, that, that's the whole point of the book, uh, told through my adventures and my research experiences. Scientists, you know, mostly write scientific and technical reports that are very stiff and difficult to read. Well, I believe I owe it back to society now to take the work I've done and try to translate it into nice, easy to read common language so people can get the same essence of the beauty and the discoveries and the thrills that I've had through a popular um, venue rather than through a stiffly written technical paper. So this book is written for a wide popular audience uh, for anyone from 8 to 80, I basically say. You know, it's, a, uh, it's an attempt to, to do a literary uh, defining of the things that I've done and worked with so hard in my scientific career. The chapters on the Eastern Diamondback are sort of a prelude to a, a larger book that I'm working on. I've worked with the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake for, golly, about 40 years. I've done radio telemetry with it, and I actually had some extra material that I, I wanted to put into my large... Uh, <laughs> my large manuscript, which is going to be about the Eastern Diamondback, but they're more popular chapters. They don't really belong in a technical uh, book about, the, about a, a species. So uh, one of these, of course, is one of the snake bites that I experienced. I opened the book up with that, and I had a very life-threatening experience on a remote island by myself doing something rather stupid. I shouldn't have tried to pick the snake up. And I tell the readers what it's like to be out in nature all alone and be threatened or with or faced with having to save yourself in the face of grave uh, envenomation from a poisonous snake. But other chapters uh, are just, I think, as interesting because I talk about the cottonmouth moccasin, which is uh, the aquatic snake of the southeastern United States that, that so many people fear. And it's always puzzled me, why do people always... Uh, name the cottonmouth as the animal they most fear, when in fact other venomous snakes are much more venomous or deadly, like the eastern diamondback or the timber rattlesnake or the coral snake. And basically I always get the answer, well, they'll chase you. And for many years I did not believe that, and most of my colleagues don't believe it either. But I had an episode happen when I was teaching some students about snakes in the field 
A cottonmouth did raise up and come toward me, but I instantly recognized it was a different kind of behavior. It wasn't really chasing me. And trying to explain that in the research I did following that uh, is what this chapter is all about. And I'm not going to tell you the punchline. <laughs> so I've discovered some interesting earthworms, one of which, believe it or not, glows when you touch it. Of course, you can't see that in the daytime, but it's at night. And so I'm trying to explain how I discover the worm and trying to figure out why it glows. Just what advantage would that have for an earthworm? My beloved sons uh, and I were on some trips uh, overseas, one of which was in Costa Rica, where we spent a wonderful morning tramping through the rainforests of, uh, of, a, of a beautiful Atlantic uh, coast forest to look for the Bushmaster, which is the world's largest pit viper, venomous pit viper. And we did have some encounters. And then later in that, uh, the next day, I was trying to write my field notes up on a volcano when the volcano erupted and for all I knew, my kids were up in the zone where the volcanic bombs were raining down. So, I mean, uh, you know, I tell that story and how we figured out how they survived and uh, <laughs> all the trials and tribulations. There's a number about Australia. I uh, was very fortunate to have an opportunity to be the... Um, scientist or the, 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 the so-called star of a National Geographic documentary about looking for the origin of the rainbow serpent myth in Australia, which enabled me to go all over the continent and find different snakes and look at them, examine them, and try to you know, paint the story of how did this rainbow serpent myth get, get started by the aboriginal people there. In the meantime, it, it, it allowed me to try to capture the world's most deadly terrestrial snake, the fierce snake, which I caught, the eastern taipan I got involved with, pythons galore, because Australia has more pythons than any other continent. And so there are a number of chapters about that, including a, a fun chapter where I discovered a place where frogs eat bats, of all things. <laughs> so the book is actually right out of my heart. It's uh, um, trying to show the excitement of science, the, the beauty of, the, of discovery, and uh, you know the importance of all these other creatures on this planet that really are our cousins. And I explain why I think that.